Hi everyone, I'm Laura Papetti sitting alongside Evan Rani today on Crimp 2 News at noon. Welcome on what was a very snowy morning here it in the was. Inland Northwest. And it continues to be now snowy afternoon. Yeah. Uh, winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings across state lines uh, really expected to continue throughout the day. This is where you shine, Evan. This, this is my time to shine, exactly. This so is it. This is why we're going right over to the wall to start talking about what we've got, uh, not only for the rest of the day today, but really through the rest of your work week. Uh, if you've seen any of our area cameras, traffic cameras, uh, views outside, or if you've even just taken a look outside your window, you've probably seen some snow at some time. If you're in central Washington, not all that much to notice there, but if you move off toward eastern Washington, we've got a winter weather advisory and a winter storm warning. It looks like around Spokane that winter storm warning has expired simply because what we're seeing right now is likely going to come in the form of rain uh, from here on out. You can see what satellite radar looks like. Most of those showers have tapered off and then they've actually started to return just in the form of rain, all that green that you see there, but up toward the northern mountains and through the North Idaho area, boy, plenty of additional snow expected as it has been in that form really over the last several hours. 12 hour forecast though shows us that we'll make it to the mid 40s in the afternoon. Still a 20% chance of showers that jumps up to a 40 and 60% uh, chance by midnight and 1 a.m. Travel plans, make sure to factor in the possibility of some trouble on the roadways. For Snoqualmie and Stevens Pass, chains are required, and we're also seeing that uh, the possibility of one to two additional feet of snow are expected. Wind speeds right now, they are very high. 26 mile per hour winds in Spokane, 20 in Ritzville, 22 in Pomeroy. All in all, this afternoon, in the next several hours, we could be moving toward gusts in the 40 to 50 mile per hour range. So it is breezy, it is snowy, and uh, those roads are slick. We'll have more details on what the next several days look like coming up in just a few minutes. All right, winter is here, right? Exactly, right? Okay, well, snow began falling about 6 o'clock this morning all around the inland northwest. Let's take a look at some of this video. Our photographer saw a few inches of snowfall in Sandpoint this morning, four to six inches of snow expected to fall there today. You might not have seen much snow, say, in downtown Spokane. However, up on Spokane South Hill, a dusting this morning. Nicole Hernandez was out all morning long. She's been tracking the snowfall since very, very early. Take a look. Yeah, we're on the South Hill where this morning it snowed pretty consistently for about two hours. You can see there's still some remnants of that snow on the ground here, but the roads are looking pretty clear. The actual snow itself has stopped falling from the sky and there's been enough cars going over the roads at this point. Now it's really just wet. There's a little bit of slush still. And depending on where you were this morning, there was snow in some places and not in others. Here on the South Hill, it snowed a good amount, but in downtown, it was mostly just rain. So as you're out and about today, just be prepared for some different conditions and maybe watch out for a little bit of snow that's lingered on the roads. I'll send things back to you guys. All right, so she's been keeping warm out there all morning long the best way she can. The eastbound lanes of Snoqualmie Pass are now open. Uh, as you can see, though, it was tricky. Washington State Patrol closed the freeway yesterday. This was following multiple spin outs. WashDOT crews say heavy snow still expected on the pass and chains are required for all vehicles without all wheel or four wheel drive. But if you're going to be traveling, certainly want to check in on those passes in Stevens County. The Sheriff's Department is investigating damage done to the cross stop at Colville Mountain. According to deputies, the lights were shot out of the privately owned landmark. The Sheriff's Department says depending on the damage, this could be a felony crime. Anyone with information, you're asked to call the Stevens County Sheriff's Office right away. All right, Gonzaga is still the top team in college basketball. This is for the third week in a row. The Bulldogs moved up to the number one spot in the AP Top 25 poll on December 23rd, and it's been just amazing as they've continued to hold on. They have been ranked in the top 10 all season, including starting the season at number eight. Over the weekend, the Zags beat Pepperdine Wave 75 to 70. The Zags taking on San Diego, San Diego. That's coming up this Thursday. All right, taking a look at some national and international news. This afternoon, there are reports of Iranian Americans being detained at the Washington border. Now it has the attention of the Washington governor, Jay Inslee. This, of course, following growing tension with the U.S. and Iran. Washington Governor Inslee tweeted that his office is tracking reports of an Iranian American being detained at the border. Also tweeting that the Department of Homeland Security told his office that they have not uh, ordered officers to detain or refuse entry 
Two Iranian Americans, the United States Customs and Border Protection, tweeted that claims of people being detained are false. Governor Inslee said he is continuing to look for answers about the reports and wants to talk to any detained, anyone detained at the border and it's certainly taking a closer look at this. The Iranian government announced yesterday that it will no longer abide by key terms of the 2015 nuclear deal, now saying they will not observe limitation on its enrichment as well as not limit its research and development in its nuclear activities. President Trump pulled the U.S. out of the deal in 2018. All right, and the Iranian leaders are vowing revenge for a general's death after he was killed in a U.S. airstrike. But President Trump is doubling down on his threat to attack the country's cultural sites if they retaliate. And yesterday, President Trump tweeted, these media posts will serve as notification to the United States Congress that should Iran strike any U.S. person or target, the United States will quickly and fully strike back and perhaps in a disproportionate manner. And on Saturday, he tweeted, the United States just spent $2 trillion on military equipment. We are the biggest and by far the best in the world. The Iranian leadership needs to understand that attacking Americans is not cost free. House Democrats will vote on a war powers resolution this week to try and limit the president's military actions. All right, taking a look around the inland northwest, a driver escaped with minor injuries after a wreck left his sports car. Look at this picture. If you're not looking at the screen, take a look. This is dramatic. It looks like something out of a movie. It left his sports car underneath a semi-trailer. You, you have to see this. It happened Friday night in Arlington, Washington. State Patrol troopers say the driver actually hydroplaned. The car slid between the front and back wheels of the trailer. They say the semi-truck driver managed to stop quickly on the road. So. Again, that's amazing in itself and no major injuries reported. Authorities say speeding drugs or alcohol did not, so I repeat, did not play a role in the crash. All right, Spokane Staple Ice Cream Shop, a fan favorite in my house, The Scoop, is opening a new location. Come March 1st, ice cream lovers can head down to Kendall Yards for a scoop cone. The Scoop will replace Brain Freeze Creamery's former location. That business closed in August due to more than $19,000 in unpaid taxes. And now the scoop will be heading down to Kendall Yards. The City of Spokane Park Board will vote this week to restore an iconic pond at Manitou Park. Spokane Parks and Recreation leaders say Mirror Pond has not had any work done on it since 1991. So it's been a while. Thousands of dollars worth of upgrades will be happening. City leaders will vote coming up on Thursday. However, it needs six votes to pass, but it's a it's a big favorite uh, for people for all, all over the city, certainly on Spokane South Hill. Yeah, very nice to see. Very nice restored. to see. Right now, of course, not as many people hanging out by the pond as you'll find in a few months from now. I know, yeah. It's a little bit more rough and tumble out yeah. there right now. Here's Gotta the view hardy. out toward Coeur d'Alene. Uh, we are expecting, though, quite a transition. All this morning we've been talking about snow. Find out when we will finally be ushering in some more rain into the forecast. It's after the break.